Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and in this video, more DMAX, more DMAX action. We are continuing the build series. If you haven't followed along, check out the playlist. We're up to, I think we're almost video 30, so there's stacks of content there. Now you guys know I'm a sucker for anything that's really well done, and particularly when it comes to storage, I love a good storage solution that makes use of dead space. But never fear, Hurricane Fabrication is here, and they have come up with this awesome solution. And they're a great bit of kit, they're lockables, so you can lock away any valuables that you might keep in there. And this is what it looks like inside. You can see that everything is really well done. We have gas struts here to lift the mechanism up. Everything is carpeted. We've got our cutout here for our existing tailgate locking mechanism so it doesn't interfere or anything with that. And it sits flush, it sits flush with our existing tailgate. So it really is nice and integrated. But enough jibber jabber, let's get started in installing this guy into the back of the D-Max. As far as what gear we're gonna need, we're gonna need most of this. So a grinder or rotary tool, but ideally a grinder, a drill file, a bit of a, a paint pen for marking out where we need to cut. Some Sika 252, this is the high strength structural adhesive and that's what's gonna help secure this to the tailgate. Some touch up paint and also ideally one of these, this is a spot weld drill bit or spot weld remover. If you don't have one of those, you can use just a big sort of 13 mil drill bit inside Instead. And then also something like a camera wheel to get up any of the leftover factory adhesive. So step one is to remove our factory cover. Now, if you've watched the video on the tailgate struts, and the central locking, you already know how to do this, but basically you just need to grab your flathead and a Phillips head. There are four little clips with bolts underneath them. So just a matter of grabbing your flathead, getting it underneath, popping those up just like that and then using your Phillips head to unscrew the screws. Once you've got all of these out, you can put those to the side. We won't be needing those again. Then it's just a matter of getting the top section out. And there is an easy way of doing this. You can do it from either end, but basically all you wanna do is take off one of these holders. You can see there, there's a slot in there, and then there's also a slot just over here. Once there's nothing in the way, you can slide this whole lot out towards you. And the next step, once we've got the cover out of the way, is to get this guy off. There are a total of 12 little screws. You just need your Phillips head again and remove each of those. So once you're at this stage, the next step is to drill out all of your little spot welds. You can see that these guys here are, are some here, here and here. So for example, there's five on this panel. And there we go, that's all of them all marked out. There's a total of 26 of them. We don't wanna be drilling out the ones right on the edge here. They need to stay because that's where our tub is going to drop into. So it's just the ones in the middle section. It's a lot safer to use one of these as opposed to busting out one of these guys. You can use this. This is a 13 mil drill bit. You just wanna be careful that when you're drilling through, as you can see, we don't wanna be drilling straight through onto our outer shell because that's the back of your tailgate, right? If you've never used a spot weld drill bit before, you can check out the how-to video on the channel. And there we go, all drilled out, as you can see there. The next step here is to grab your shop vac or whatever you've got at hand. We wanna just vacuum up all of the swarf. Now just lay your template out just like this. And at this point, you will need to remove these two rubber strips. So there's one at the front, there is one at the back. Just grab a trim removal tool and you can get in just underneath and just strip up one side. It's just double-sided taped on. And then you can pull the whole lot off in one go just like that. And this is what it should look like once it's all marked out. You wanna just take a bit of a step back at this point and just double check yourself. Just make sure that your template is all nice and square and parallel. And once you are happy and you've taken your time to check, you wanna move on to the next step, which is grabbing your weapon of choice because now we need to cut out all of this excess steel. So grind is normally gonna be the way to go. You could use a Dremel or something like that, but ultimately you wanna take your time. You wanna get really fine because the drop-in is a tight fit. Just be mindful as well. You do have bits and bobs underneath this, right? So you don't wanna to go too crazy. The main part of the loom's gonna run down through here and exits out the back here. So just at this section here, get your hand underneath, not while you're cutting obviously, but before you cut, just get your hand underneath, get a bit of a feel for it, and just take your time. You really just wanna cut that top layer off. And there we go, that's what that should look like, all cut out. You should be able to pull it out just like that. So we can sort of sit that guy sort of over that way. And there we go, that's 
what the inside should look like. And our next step is just to remove the stuff that is stuck to the tub. So all of these brackets, this big guy here and these guys here, you should be able to, well that one came off nice and easy. It's just this adhesive, so you can pull these straight off and then same story in here, you're just gonna have to undo, you can see how the the, uh, the bracket comes underneath these bolts. You just need to undo undo those guys so you can pull this little bracket out. And then we wanna get the vac in there. We wanna suck up all of this swarf and peel off any of this leftover adhesive. That's where something like our caramel wheel comes into play. The same story up the top here. We wanna make sure all of these surfaces are completely flat. You can see like all of this tape, for example, we wanna take off. We want this surface to be nice and flat. So when we are installing this guy, it has a nice flat surface to mount to. And then from here, you wanna clean up all of your edges just like this, get all of that back to just straight body, get stuck into here, clean all this out, use your shop vac or your or weapon of choice. And once you've done a first pass and sort of cleaned everything up, grab your file. You just wanna go over any of these sort of edges. Then you wanna get just some flat black or whatever color you're gonna be using and just touch everything up. Any of this bare, bare metal, bare steel you wanna to touch up, make sure there's no rust. I'm gonna go the extra step by just taping off all of this bit all the way around and I'm gonna paint all of this bit here so it's all flat black. So the next step from here, once you've got all that ready to roll, is we wanna replace our little rods. These are the central locking rods or the, the door opening rods, the tailgate rods. That's what causes these guys to open and shut. As you can see when we pull on that, that's what opens our tailgate. With the factory ones, how they sort of stick up, that's not gonna work very well when we're wanting something to sit really flush into that cavity. So we have the existing ones that get replaced by these guys here. We wanna get these installed and adjusted. You can see where we can adjust the length of these as well. So they're a nice, tight and solid fit on either end. And then once we've got them in place, we can give it a test. And there we go, that's what that looks like. You should be able to have those sitting almost touching the, the base of the tailgate. Same on this side, it's just a rinse and repeat exactly the same way. Line this up to the bolt size and then tighten it down. One thing to note, when you do tighten both of these bolts, you're not looking for maniac tight or even super tight. You wanna keep it just that little bit loose. So that way you've got that little bit of wiggle room so that when you do pull that handle, you've got enough pivot in each of these so that nothing binds up and it's all nice and functional. All right, so from here, we're getting towards D-Day. We're getting towards the exciting part where we get this thing all buttoned up. So the next step is to remove our little centerpiece here. To do that, you just need to grab yourself a four mil Allen key. There is a bolt in there, just in here. There's another one in the middle here, and then there's another one on the end here. So just unbolt all three of those. And once you've got them out of the way, you should be able to take off that center plate, just exposing our inside here. This is what we're gonna see that locking mechanism all sit into. And the next step is we wanna test fit this bad boy. We wanna put that into there. So just grab it. It's a two-handed job, so filming's gonna be interesting. Get your wiring looms all nice and tucked up and ready to go. That should be sitting up there for that plug so that this part can really flatten itself down. And there we go, test fit successful. It's all in nicely. It should be pretty well flush all the way around. Double check anything like that. We shouldn't be really forcing anything. One final thing to test before you go pulling it back out again is the handle mechanism. So just get underneath there the handle should still work just like normal. Great stuff. So now we wanted to get this guy back out of here for the final time. Then we want to run that Sikaflex and bolt it all into place. And then once you've removed that for the final time, you want to grab your Sikaflex 252. That's that high strength structural adhesive, the stuff they use obviously on buses and all sorts of stuff. You want to run a bead of it all the way around on this sort of top section here, the part where it's going to contact. Once you're comfortable with that, give it a couple of minutes. You do have a bit of a working time, so definitely don't go and make another coffee or, or grab another beer or anything like that. You want to give it a couple of minutes and then pretty much get cracking straight away on dropping that guy into its final position. And boom, there we go, all installed. Make sure you're really getting everything lined up and into place and all aligned in time. If you do use the white stuff like I do, just don't get yourself in black stuff. So that way, if uh, if you've got any overflow, it's not too big a deal. The good news with this stuff, it's easily paintable. So once all this dries, uh, another bit of, uh, of, of matte black over there is gonna do the job. But other than that, we're good to go here. Our final step in securing this is now opening the inside up, opening up our lid. 
just like that. Once we've got him open, we have each of our little holes here. And what we need to do with those is go to our packet of screws. And in our packet of nuts and bolts here, we do have a couple of, of, of keys, of course, but then a whole bunch of our self tappers here. And we even have our square drill bit. So that's pretty awesome from Hurricane. So that's our next step. We're gonna bust those guys open and drill them all into place. Now, when you are buzzing these in, you wanna use a drill that has a torque setting and you really wanna make sure that you're, you're just not going crazy with these because you don't wanna strip these out. Ultimately, all these are doing is just, just sitting these down so that it gives an extra point of security to keep this nice and flush. Keep upping the strength of your drill until you get to that sweet spot where you can screw the entire screw in until it's it's nice and flush. And there we go, we're all in. Any uh, leftover bits, so just double check all of your bolts, anything that's sort of squishing out like that, just run it across. Hey, hey reason for gloves here, guys, reason for gloves. You can just uh, squish that across with your finger so it's all nice and sealed. Same sort of story at the back here. Don't worry too much if you've got the white stuff and you're making a mess like that because from here, once that's dry, just give that a lick of the matte black there again so it all nice and blends in. And then we can give it a bit of a final test. There's our locking mechanism working like a treat. We can see no problems there. So from there, once we've confirmed that, we can get our cover piece here. That can get slotted back into position. We need to put our three bolts into position. And then a final tidy up because we are almost done. And there we go, all installed. This thing is awesome. We've given everything a bit of a touch up all the way around. Bit of the matte black down the back there so that it's all looking schmick. The dry time on the Sika is up to a couple of days for a full cure. So just resist the urge to open and shut the uh, tailgate a thousand times. Give it at least an hour or two just to sit under its own weight and start curing. Of course, you can put whatever you want in here. It really is up to you and what's gonna suit your particular purpose. The other really cool thing about this is it gives you an entirely, other than our locks, an entirely flat surface for the back of the D-Max. So that sort of bumpy surface that you had in the past, no more, it is nice and flat. So perfect for a roadside cook-up, that kind of thing on the beach. You can have plenty of space there on the tailgate and nice and flat and usable. The other final thing that I would definitely recommend investigating if you do go ahead and get one of these for yourself is this extra little bit here. So you can see that there's a couple of mil that sits on top. This is kind of like a cutting board material. So rather than the straight steel underneath and paint and what have you that ultimately will probably get scratched up and what have you over time, it's the back of a ute, it's gonna happen. You can put this over the top. So it gives you a little bit of extra protection. It's cheap and I can totally see that if this gets all scuffed up over time, over a couple of years, nice and easy. You can just replace this top section and boom, it's nice and new once again. And final note, just before we wrap up, a few of you have asked in the DMs, what's the impact if you do have a tailgate strut kit? This is the HSP kit. And as far as how they perform, form with everything installed, bearing in mind I have those straps and what have you, that's kind of what you're looking at. So it's not too bad at all. The good news is though, if you are after even more performance, Hurricane themselves have got a new strut that is coming out and it is a little bit more higher pressure than the standard struts. So more designed to work with this. So if you are interested in something like that, I'll make sure I update the links in the description below. So there we go. That is it for another video, guys. That is the ultimate tailgate four wheel drive storage solution. A massive thank you to Hurricane Fabrications for one, coming up with such an awesome solution and two for supporting this video let me know in the comments down below as well what do you what do you reckon what do you reckon about this i absolute absolutely love it i think it is a great use of wasted space but let me know let me know what you think down below as always a massive thank you to the patreons of video show me how your extra support guys of course goes without saying makes a big difference in me being able to bring this kind of content out for all of you stacks more dmax content on the way guys but as always i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video cheers guys